In this video, we're going to discuss how to use Assembly Clash within Assembly Design. It's located in the section bar under Assembly, and if you look in the action bar, it's to the far right area. And you'll see that there are actually two tools to using it. And they're not called Clash. It's a tool called Create Interference Simulation and Create Non-Persistent Interference Simulation. And basically, the difference is, is the one on the left Create Interference Simulation allows you to keep the results of the interference or clash within the specification tree, where the non-persistent interference simulation will not keep the information or results of the clash, but allow you to use them as you see it at the moment. So let's go ahead and we're going to use the non-persistent interference simulation. We're going to select on that and notice that we have two tabs under the light interference simulation definition dialog. Specification and context. For this tab under specification we're going to select clash and contact. You can also select clearance but you have to give value to the clearance. You also have the engineering connection and you can have the choice of check no clash, no check, check clearance, or check contact. We also have a compute quantifier and then in their context we have a drop down menu. Here we have what we'll be checking for clash and contact and you have to decide which groups you're going to use. For this instance we're going to use between all components. When you're all set with everything that you selected go ahead and click OK and notice right away we'll get a window with clash and contact for each of the items that you select on. So if I select on this first row And also, we have a pin and unpin arrow so that we can unpin this so we can see our contact and clash easier by selecting on that arrow. And we can also bring it back as well. Up to the right, we have context transparency, which allows us, if we actually select on it in the box, which turns it on, we can then change the transparency of the rest of our components within the assembly so that we can get a better look at the clash or contact area. And you can see here how we have this tessellated orange red lines that are showing us that we're having clash and contact within these two parts as you can see here. We also have a contextual menu that pops up and it shows us how we can measure an item, we can measure between items, and we can also section. If I select on that, I'm going to zoom back out. Notice how this will allow me to change which way I'd like to look through the model itself. And we can actually take a look to see where exactly the clash and contact is happening. When you're done with that, you can always go to the right corner and we have a sectioning window. Go ahead, select close, and that'll take you out of it. The next item we have within the contextual menu is a color overload. So if I select this, this will be an easier talking point to show us the yellow component to the blue component. And we can also take that off. And we also have a zoom, zoom out, and zoom in. But we can also use our mouse, middle button, right click to zoom in further to see the contacts being made between the components. And when you're all finished at looking at the interference, go ahead, select the arrow below, and to exit out of it, Simply within this window here, you can hit close with the X button to the far right. And that is how to use assembly clash within assembly design. 